Hello everyone and welcome to another Path of Exile video. Today I have a few of the updates that I've made to the character and at the end of the video I will include a mapping showcase and a couple of bosses that I've taken down with the character including uh, Katarina and the new pirate boss. So, I'm currently level 91 having already acquired a six link so the links i'm currently using is eviscerate chance to bleed brutality maleficent cruelty and volatility support then in the weapon I'm, i switch to an immortal character immortal call uh, setup because i found that it was kind of necessary to have the extra mitigation on tier 16 and tier 15 maps which i'm currently running then uh, still using the auto exertion i haven't really leveled this one because i figured uh it doesn't really uh do anything to level it it just makes it cost more mana and i added this hex bloom which i want to level up a little bit and i'll, I'll start leveling up because the the helmet has quite a bit of intelligence and uh, still using the vulnerability I really want the 20% quality to get the chance to aggravate bleeding so I'll probably do a couple of lab rooms to get that uh, I dropped this helmet you can see the teardrops for uh, for life are crazy right now I'm almost reaching 4k life I don't have much so this is a tier 5 on the chest is 121 which I think was the tier 1 uh, previously this can go up to like 150, 160 almost. Uh, the amulet, I added this uh, crushing reply anoint, which was literally like, like the two base oils. You see here, it's yeah, th just those oils. And this gives me 45, so I removed the 45 from the blade storm uh, links. Now, blade storm is I bought the blade storm of uncertainty. So that while mapping, I just stay in Sandstats, but I still have a chance of producing the the Blood Blastorm, which gives me increased attack speed, the Sands Blastorm, which is nice because of the movement speed. And uh, run main support, life gain on hit for some extra bits of recovery and calling strike, which feels really nice. Then I'm running these two rings with Elrion crafted mods to handle the mana costs. Uh, just some, you know, resistances and trying to get as much chaos res as possible. Again, this ring has some region and currently I'm running to like, uh, yeah, 523, but I'm using Jack the Axe. And uh, that mod, Thirst for Blood, is this skill here, which if up to five nearby enemies will give you five, uh, 400 life region. So that's uh, 2,000 life regen from the weapon. Like Jadiak cost me like uh, 70 chaos. And it was definitely worth it. The damage difference was noticeable. And the recovery is really good for tier 16 maps. Shield is the same. Uh, the gloves are the same that I bought yesterday. I just added uh, the Exart for the extra leech. This belt I also dropped. It has a lot of strength. And again, a tier 1 life and life regen. So this, co this comes around to what, uh, total, yeah, 188 life, pretty good. And then these boots that I also dropped, and nothing extraordinary about them really. Then I'm using a tincture, and that's where uh, the passive tree is going to come in handy. So this is 23% damage over time multiplier, and 85% increased ble bleeding damage. The way I did that is I respect the tree a little bit. So I was pathing here. And now I decided to path this way. Of course, I grabbed all my various stands. I removed these points because uh, this is more damage than this. This is just bleed duration. The chance to bleed, I don't really care. Um, this has chance to bleed here. This has bleed duration. This actually has damage over time multiplier. So it's, it's the same amount of points. Is no, there was no difference in pathing, and this was more damage, so I removed these. Then uh, this was still here. 
added this juice this juice lot to get the uh, corrupted lot immunity and also gives me some intelligence and uh, DOT. Then this is the big change. I used some of the points I removed from here and I think I removed a couple of points here as well. And this one. So this to grab 6% more, 12% uh, more life. And then I padded all the way here grabbing this for the element avoidance and the life and most importantly reduce mana burn rate and uh, tinctures have a chance to not inflict mana burn rate but most importantly the first the six mana burn you get does not have an effect so that means that at the very least I will get a six second uptime on the damage over time multiplier with a six second cooldown so that's like a 50 percent uptime on the tincture modifier which i can use realistically in the highest damage windows which means when i'm actually retaliating on the boss when i can stand still when i can place the banner i can pop the tincture do a bunch of damage and then uh switch off uh, the tincture is gonna go on cooldown then i can try to use it again um it has been working um decently well uh, I still think that probably these points, it's a bunch of damage, but I don't really realistically see how we can pass this way. It's too many points. Maybe if I reach level 100, I will try that. Or uh, there's even another tincture node here. Uh, but this is already too far away. But it's pretty good. Uh, there's also the option of just trying to anoint some of them. Then, okay, I removed Testudo. The life gain on block is, it's good. But at this point, with the 2000 life recovery from Jack the Axe, I don't really need that life gain on block. It's not noticeable. And instead, I expect into this to make the endurance generation very consistent. And I'm going to for a second. So make the endurance generation very, very consistent. It also grams... Uh, a decent amount of chance to block and allows me to get the mastery to eventually get uh, max block, uh, especially spell block, or uh, when I do Exarch and Eater. Then I grab these axe nodes. So you have these two options. This is more attack speed, but uh, we don't really need that much attack speed. So this is more damage. This is 30% uh, in. So it's 30% and 30 element damage, so 60% damage. Uh, or maybe maybe just 30% damage. Uh, well, as this is 25%, uh, so it's more. And then uh, bleeding faster, bleeding faster here. The extra region here. This makes uh, quite a difference, you know. If you have 5 bleeding enemies nearby you, that's 400 times uh, 5. That's 2,000 region. And if you have 15% increase life regeneration rate, that happens instead of uh, per second, it's 15% faster per second. So that's uh, like 1.5 uh, multiplier times 1.15. That is like 300 region worth this point uh, for the Jack the Axe. And then I added the 10% maximum physical attack damage. All right. Uh, regarding the Atlas. Um, I'm currently running mostly tier 16, tier 16 maps and I'm gonna actually gonna run at now. Try not to not to run these two crazy because again since I have to block since I have to take damage to do damage it can get really spooky. And I also have the Eater and Extra Invitations ready. But that's not really part of uh, Day 2. That's actually part of Day 3 because it's already for a day for the heal. Yes, this is blue, but still a tier 16, and I really need to run it corru corru corrupted because I already have the bonus. 
Regarding map mods, uh, there are two map mods that you can definitely not run. Of course, there is physical reflection, but also I don't run reduced block chance. It's insane how much it cuts your damage. This is too loud. wasn't too loud during the video. You can see how, how it performs against stuff like Harvest Monsters. Some of them can be really annoying. Especially the mobs that just run away from you instead of trying to hit you. And we actually have heart vessels. Interesting. Put the portal here just in case. I don't have the war banner though. Okay, so I applied the tincture there. You can see mana burn starts to tick, but I'm not really degening mana. There you go, I'm actually X7, but now the leech is taking over to keep in the uptime. Eventually, you will not be able to sustain it, but that's already 13 seconds. There you go, and, and I could actually maintain the, the tincture during the whole fight. So that's quite a bit of damage extra. I'm also in sandstand, so that's uh, even less damage. Because Blood Stance gives you 18% increased damage taken by enemies. Intro here. Because I don't like fighting the Wowers for very long. Right. Done. Oh, I forgot to mention I did overlap, of course. Uh, and I, got, I grabbed the Bleed Pops. Because they feel amazing, as you can tell. I, can't do this just yet. I can see, like, for Ubers, you you would remove the bleed pop note and grab something else, like um, maybe. No, you can't really add aggravate because that's after the bleed pops. But you may be able to grab the. Uh, the one that gives you damage over a few seconds, 1% damage every second. When there is a rare or unique enemy. It's a little bit spooky. Okay, let's pop this one quick. Make sure there is no immune to physical. And I may die here. Nope. Leap pops coming in clutch. in an expedition in hopes that I can eventually use rope to craft a good weapon but it has to be very lucky because I need him to influence it with Elder to get the DOT mod or Hunter or maybe I could just leave it with an empty suffix I think so this boss can be annoying I see no dying. Come and strike. Live on. Live on. Nice. 15 seconds of time on the tincture. Okay, there you go. And that's all I have for day two. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched uh, this long, 
now uh, the map in showcase is gonna occur uh, if you did let me know if you're playing this build or where are you playing in uh, in the current Pathbexa league and if you're enjoying the league I think it's quite it's very it's very funny the, the 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 new mechanic and I'll make a separate video about uh, what I'm doing with the league mechanic if you're interested in that if you do uh, make sure to leave a like and share this video with your friends thank you and have a great day
those filthy opportunists will be next sank. Crushed. I can't do Run this you through. Deaths crush you. The wrath of the sea! Captain always goes down with this shit. 